everyone, good evening. This is the Hound Dog here, and uh, I'm sure you're getting used to this camera being pointed towards the computer monitor, but I haven't quite yet figured out how to get this up in a video without doing it this way. So it's all part of the learning curve, but I wanted to take you on a little trip because this fake news thing is just becoming so interesting the way it's being played out. Now, I've been listening to a video. This is what's, let me just set this up for you. Okay, so I've been listening to a video by a friend of mine. And uh, one of the things that he pointed out was that the, uh, the mainstream media put up websites and videos. And uh, then they don't leave the comment section open. And of course, you know, how much fun is that? You, you can't interact with this video. Are you, are you so afraid that somebody might make a a comment that doesn't jive with what you say. Uh, anyways, so I thought I would take a little look here at our own Prime Minister. Okay, so this is Justin Trudeau's channel. Okay, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. This is the official channel. And this is the uh, where Justin meets Trump in the White House. Okay, so it's going to go down here, and we're going to look at the comments, and, oh, oh, there's only four comments. The first one I saw the comments, I thought, great, well, uh, this means that Justin really is allowing people to say what they want to say. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you read the comments, um, Donald Trump says a lot about nothing. Justin Trudeau is the apposite, very polite, professional, eloquent, diplomatic, and to the point. This young man makes Donald Trump looks even more of an imbecile. Uh, Justin Trudeau, he's nice, but I don't want the radical Islamic in my backwood. Uh, fellow believers, please let's remember to keep praying for Trump and his family and for his appointees and their families for protection, health and divine guidance. Trump needs us too. He needs us to keep him covered with our prayers. And please let us also pray for a great revival of America, Canada and for the world's two, for, of, uh, of the world, sorry, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Thank you. So if we go over here, and this is the global news, uh, same thing, President Donald Trump, Prime Minister, hold joint news conference. Now, this is what it looks like when you have your comment section open. Well, actually, I did take time to watch both of the presentations. And as you can see, Justin's eyes are pointing downwards and he is reading from a script. Let's see if we can catch a, a little piece here. And there is Donald Trump. His eyes are pointing downwards because he is reading from a script. So this is neither of these peoples individually. They had a speechwriter made the speech for them. But you'll see that Justin Trudeau actually does either severely limit his comments or edit the comments. But I mean to have four comments only on something like this when there are literally hundreds on the other one uh, is just nonsense. Uh, so we're going to go to another little piece about Justin Trudeau. Okay, this is the Trump Truth Watch. Wow, Justin Trudeau refuses to shake Donald Trump's hand. Now, I want you to watch this because this is a very, very clever piece of editing. Okay, so here we go. Are you ready? And now what I want you to do... Okay, so just watch this. Watch this clip. Okay, so pay attention here, pay attention to his face as he looks down. There you go, it looks like he is rejecting Donald Trump's hand, and there's a big pregnant pause, and nothing's going on. Okay, so let me see. Now here is the telegraph. Okay, now watch this take. This is what actually happened. Okay, we're just going to go back a bit. I just want you to... There you go. See, look, that's his face there. Watch. They edit it just at a split second before this. So, 
Yes, it's arguably a far cry from Trump's famously drawn out handshakes, but it's not as the other video indicates that he refused to shake hands. Okay, and of course, here's another little picture here of uh, the shaking hands. I mean, this is just absolute nonsense. Okay, so now we get on to CNN. They have become a big part of the problem. They are part of the corrupt system. Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and Abraham Lincoln, and many of our greatest presidents fought with the media and called them out, oftentimes, on their lies. When the media lies to people, I will never, ever let them get away with it. I will do whatever I can that they don't get away with it. They have their own agenda. They heard President Trump and he referred to Thomas Jefferson uh, there, Alice. But when you go back and look at what Thomas Jefferson actually said about the media, he said, were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. That's one of many statements he made, basically in favor uh, of the media. He was a founding father. Freedom of the press is in the First Amendment. What do you make of Donald Trump's comments there? I think it's important also in, in Thomas Jefferson's comment is he says no well, government should be without censors. So now I, what I did was um, I went to the piece that they are talking about here. Uh, this is in 1787. This comes from. Uh, it's just a short piece, so I'll read the whole thing to you so you understand the context of all of this. And it says, The tumults in America, I expected, would have produced in Europe an unfavorable opinion of our political state, but it has not. On the contrary, the small effect of those tumults seem to have given more confidence in the firmness of our governments. The interposition of the people themselves on the side of the government has had a great effect on the opinion here. I am persuaded myself that the good sense of the people will always be found to be the best army. They may be led astray for a moment, but will soon correct themselves. The people are the only censors of their governors, and even their errors will tend to keep these to, to the true principles of their institution. To punish these errors too severely would be to suppress the only safeguard of the public liberty. The way to prevent the irregular interpretations of the people is to give them full information of the affairs through the channel of the public papers. Now this is the interesting bit right here. And to contrive that those papers should penetrate the whole mass of the people. The basis of our governments being the opinion of the people, the very first object should be to keep that right and where the left and were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. But I should mean that every man should receive those papers and be capable of reading them. I am convinced that those societies, as far as the Indians, uh, which live without government, enjoy in their general mass an infinite greater degree of happiness than those who live under European governments. Among the former, public opinion is in the place of law and restrains morals as powerfully as laws ever did any, anywhere. Among the latter, under pretense of governing, they have divided the nations into, into two classes, wolves and sheep. I do not exaggerate. This is a true picture of Europe. Cherish, therefore, the spirit of our people and keep alive their attention. Do not be too severe upon their errors, but reclaim them by enlightening them. If once they become inattentive to the public affairs, you and I and Congress and assemblies, judges and governors shall all become wolves. It seems to be the law of our general nature, in spite of individual exceptions, and experience declares that man is the only animal which devours its own kind. For I can apply no milder term to the governments of Europe, and to the general prey of the rich on the poor. So how this translates to me is that uh, Thomas Jefferson was in favour of the press, but also that the press should spread 
the truth and uh, that the um, it should go to all people and that all people should be able to read the truth so basically he's in favor of the press supporting the government and keeping the popular opinion because if the government loses the popular opinion of the people then the government will become the wolves and will ultimately fail and uh, will not be loved by the people or obeyed by the people okay so he's basically attempting to control the press but as he calls it control the press with truth or preventing the press from uh, uh, not using the truth or not reporting things in the correct fashion okay so this is quite a bit different of completely being in support of the press okay he's quite clearly saying that yes I support the press under certain conditions so even here you know if you take that say that that um, paragraph out of context you don't get the full sense of what's being said in this letter okay so again very misleading taken out of context very misleading now it's an interesting little point right here where it says I am convinced that those societies as the Indians which live without government enjoy in their general mass an infinitely greater degree of happiness than those who live under European governments and of course he's referring to the governments in North America being based upon European governments but he says right here that if you're completely free of governments your life will probably be a lot happier because among the former public opinion is in the place of law and restrains morals as powerfully as laws ever did anywhere in other words uh, the what your peers thought of you what your peers thought of your behavior was more important and kept you in place it kept you from going way off to one side or the other uh, because you were concerned of what your peers thought of you and your actions anyway I just thought it was interesting that uh, we might enjoy an infinite greater degree of happiness without government and govern ourselves okay so as I said this is in uh, 1787 so uh, she was right Thomas Jefferson did say that. However, if we move on to uh, 1807, uh, Thomas Jefferson to John Norville, okay, he says, to your request of my opinion on the matter in which a newspaper should be conducted so as to be most useful, I should answer by restraining it to true facts and sound principles. Yet I fear such a paper would find few subscribers it is a melancholy truth that a suppression of the press could not uh, more completely deprive the nation of its benefits than it than is done by its abandoned prostitution to falsehood nothing can now be believed which is seen in the newspaper truth itself becomes suspicious by being put out into that polluted vehicle the real extent of this state of misinformation is known only to those who are in situations to confront facts within their knowledge with the lies of the day okay so I don't really have to go on any further with that but um, so what's happened here from uh, the uh, previous amendment 18 uh, sorry 1787 which is 13 20 years further on he says Thomas Jefferson is now 20 years older and uh, he is in the middle uh, during his campaign against John Adams Thomas Jefferson and his opponent waged a vicious war against one another in the nation's newspapers spreading ugly and demeaning information in what was the first such smear campaign in the country's history okay so you can see that he has changed his attitude and so actually both parties are right and it's only if you had taken the time to go back and read both of these documents and put two and two together 
and realized that they were in the middle of a huge conflict just as uh, Trump and Clinton were during the election. Would you realize that you're actually being misled here uh, by the splitting of the truth? Okay, so um, the media is doing a really dishonorable service. And I can only say that for the, I don't know how long, the media, the main, what has been the mainstream media, has been basically in the pocket of the government, one way or another, or their corporate interests. Between the three of them, uh, the corporate interests that own, as you saw in my other video, six main corporate interests own all of the media just about there's a few independents and all of those corporate interests are going to be um, filtered through all of those news media so you know the people who own popular science and popular mechanics will be putting forward ideas that they want to see out on the street and ignoring ideas that they don't want to see out on the street Okay, so this has got nothing to do with news. This has got everything to do with a meme, with a story, with presenting one particular side or another. And they will do absolutely anything that they can to get their way with the public. And as I said in my previous video about the concentration of media, what this does is it really contracts the story there is no argument, there is no debate. Um, uh, as we saw with the Gorka, um, it was just using money to stop the freedom of the press. And you know what? There are only two conditions. You are either free or you are a prisoner. And freedom of the press basically means within very, 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 very few exceptions uh, you're free to say basically whatever you want to say no matter how many people don't like it or disagree with you and that's the whole point I mean that's actually how we got to where we are today is because we had these discussions where people did make outrageous statements and comments and they were put to the test by the public not by corporations who felt that um, they were going to lose arms sales in the Middle East, for example, because Trump might pull out of the Middle East and let Russia just take care of the whole mess, um, or stop selling arms to third world countries, which would greatly affect all of the munitions manufacturers, the military industrial complex, and so on and so forth, who depend heavily on the sale of these weapons and you know, the getting rid of the old and the, and the bringing in of the new. And so all of these corporate interests, the government interests, have all come together in one great big web of deceit. Okay, and the alt media, which who I may add, uh, are by and large, uh, some of the better alt media stations are actually being run by journalists who went to journalist school who A, didn't uh, fit in with the corporate uh, story, didn't want to write the stories that the corporation wanted them to write, uh, actually wanted to go out there and do investigative journalism and really get their teeth into the story and were stopped because it wasn't in the, the corporation's interest. Um, you know, just, just look at the uh, divisions between our newspapers. I mean, the National Post, for example, uh, you can see how completely uh, right-wing that paper is. Uh, its whole stance is right-wing. Every position it holds is right-wing. Uh, I mean, it's well-written, there's no doubt about that, but it will look for things that support their own story. And of course, because the pool out there, the pool of information is now so huge, I suspect uh, and this is what I'm trying to show you by example here with all of these, um, you know, things, these two different uh, quotes from um, Thomas Jefferson, is how you can use, you can, you can dip into that pool and you can pull out anything that you want to pull out. And I'm afraid we have reached the era where you have to go in, 
you have to go onto the internet, you have to go into the library, and you actually have to research yourself or you're going to get hoodwinked. And I, for one, do not believe that the corporate intent has anything to do with the public intent. The corporate intent, well, look at some of the things these corporations do. Look at the sweatshops in third world countries. Okay, look at the accidents. Uh, look at the look at Bhopal um, when they had the big chemical accident over there. Uh, the collapses uh, of uh, buildings because they just stuffed them full of people to make garments. You know, for companies uh, 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 like um, oh um, Loblaws. Okay, they were tied in with with an incident just recently where a building collapsed and several people were killed. But I I've seen stories of. Uh, Mexican sweatshops where uh, the doors are guarded okay and you cannot leave I'm sure you've heard the stories of um, Apple employees in China you know where they have a big net around the accommodation so that people can't jump out and commit suicide because the conditions are so oppressive now you tell me what person would do that what kind of person would do that and if you would do that to somebody and not care only looking at your bottom line and you know what uh, it turned out that for Apple to bring their manufacturing back to North America would cost them $30 per phone okay we're talking a $700 item so for the sake of $30 this corporation would rather have people jump out of a window to try and kill themselves to escape the oppression then they would bring those jobs back to America and lose 30 bucks on the deal. So what would those people stop at? If you don't care about those people in China, you know what, you don't care about these people in America either. In fact, you didn't care what happened to those people who had those jobs in America. And you just built a, a new $5 billion dollar building I was looking at that the other day unbelievable high tech incredible building and yet you will suck the lifeblood out of people in the far east to take advantage of, a, of their poverty okay that's what that's doing that's taking advantage of their poverty because they have nowhere else to go now to me that is unconscionable that is beyond the pale and um, so I, I mean I really personally I just don't I don't have a television I don't watch this mainstream nonsense except uh, I pick up some of it on the internet when I want to do some research like this but basically I have sorted out my own news media uh, for on the internet and I'll tell you they are there are some darn good reporters out there one of which my favorite James Corbett the Corbett report Max Kaiser the Kaiser financial report with uh, with Stacy Herbert oh my goodness you you can't get better stuff than this I know they're all down on Russia but RT is an unbelievable channel I've never seen such unbiased reporting it's, it's like going back to well no, I don't think I've ever seen it any anywhere okay so and this is what this legacy media is finding out and what's what they're crying about and to be quite honest with you they deserve what they get CNN CNN okay this this is a uh, a corporation okay who basically was an unpaid unofficial arm of the government during the Iraq war they were embedded within the army they were told what they could see, what they could report. Okay, you've got Hollywood with um, the movie The Hurt Locker, for example. You know, glorifying the war in Iraq and, and how tough it was to be a bomb disposal expert in that country. Um, what about, um, oh, what was it called? Um, Black Hawk Down. Again, not, not only kind of glorifying war, and the bravery of the soldiers and don't get me wrong 
you know, this would be a horrible situation. I would not choose to be in that situation myself. Wouldn't want to be there, wouldn't sign up, ain't going to do it. That's it. I did, did no way. And these young boys and girls who are over there, my heart goes out to them. But here is Hollywood glorifying. Okay, and what was that one about the capture of um, Osama bin Laden? Okay, which was absolute nonsense. Anyway, that whole story was nonsense. And I am going to put in a little clip. If I can find this clip, it's, it's somewhere on my hard drive. In this interview with David Frost, uh, Benazir Bhutto quite clearly says that bin Laden has been killed in 2007. Do you know yet, does anyone know exactly who was responsible for this assassination attempt? There was one report that said that you had arranged to send President Musharraf a letter to be sent in the event of your death by assassination, urging him to investigate certain individuals in his government. Is that true? Yes, it is true that I wrote to General Musharraf. I received uh, information from... Uh, General Musharraf that a friendly country had passed on to them the information that I could be attacked by a gang from the Afghan uh, warlord Baitullah Masood or by um, Hamza bin Laden the son of Osama bin Laden or by the Pakistani Taliban in Islamabad or by a group in Karachi so I sent back a letter saying that while these groups may be used I thought it was more important to go after the people who supported them, who organized them, who could possibly be uh, the financiers or the organizers of the finance for those groups. And I named three individuals who I thought were their sympathizers. Now I understand that I could be wrong and my suspicions could be misplaced. But these are the people that I suspect want to stop the restoration of democracy. They want to stop my return because they know in 1993 when Pakistan was on the brink of being declared a terrorist state, I stopped the rise of terrorism, and they know that I can do it again. So I feel that these are the forces that really want to stop not just me, but the democratic process and the will of the people from triumphing. And uh, in terms of these three people that uh, you mentioned, um, were, they, were they members of or associated with the government? Yes, well, one of them is um, a very key figure in security. He's a former military officer. He is someone that um, has had dealings with um, Jaish Muhammad, one of the banned groups with Maulana Azhar, who was in an Indian jail for decapitating three British uh, tourists and three American tourists. And um, he also had dealings with uh, Omar Sheikh, the man who murdered uh, Osama bin Laden. Now I know that having dealings with people uh, does not necessarily mean direct evidence, but I also know that it... Oh, that was just a slip of the tongue, they said. Oh, she was confused. Well, she was assassinated. That's what happened. And to me, that actually gives the whole thing credibility. Okay? So... Uh, no, I, I forget who said it. I think maybe, maybe it was Russo said, that which is about to fall deserves to be pushed. And the mainstream media deserves to be pushed. Or, or get your finger out and actually do some investigative reporting. Um, you know, another little thing, where, where was it? Um, okay, here we go, the Telegraph. Oh, no comments. No comments. I wonder why that is. You think that they can't, uh, you know, I, I, can do a, I can do a comment. So why are there no comments? Somebody's cleaning them off. Okay, somebody's cleaning them off. That's why there are no comments here. You know, you pick any other video. It's long been said that you can choose your friend. Oh, look at that. Ha! Huh. Associated Press, AMP. No comments. Hmm. Comments are disabled for this video.
BBC News comments okay you see when you leave the comments open you are saying let's have a discussion say what you like <laughs> Canadian president looks transgender to me okay <laughs> does his mother and father know he's out late <laughs> at night playing politics I think Canada and America should have been uh, one nation. Trump would never have won, and we've got a better choice than Clinton. Left wingers are like a mental disorder, parasites, and they're intolerant shitheads. And as much as you might dislike this, this is what popular discussion looks like. Okay? And this is good. This kind of discussion, this open discussion, this is how we learn from each other. This is how we learn from each other. You read down some of these comments, and you know what? Maybe they'll change your mind. Maybe they won't. Maybe they saw something that you didn't see in, the, in this video. Okay? Obama and Trudeau trade jokes. So, if you're ever making a video, leave the comments section open. It means that you're at least trying to be honest. It means you're at least trying to engage the public. But in this, overall, I have to admit, Trump is absolutely 100% right. The mainstream media are not getting it. They haven't got it for an awful long time. Okay? And if they can't keep up, if they can't be honest, if they can't have independent journalism, without corporatism attached to it or a corporate agenda then frankly you know we've grown out of that this is a 60s 70s 80s 90s meme okay and it's done we're in the 21st century now and what we're looking for is truth and honesty because with truth and honesty you can actually make a decision you can make a real decision with this nonsense you can't make any decisions about your life and I would dare you to find, except in the smallest of situations, uh, you know, yeah, they, they report the truth when the rain's falling, because you can see the rain is falling. Uh, they report the truth over, you know, a tornado that's hit the center of town, something like that, because it's, you know, it's obvious, it's cause and effect, it's right there in front of your eyes, you can see it. But uh, other than that, you can't trust these people as far as you can throw them, and they are being shown up more and more and more by people on YouTube and people on Vote and people on uh, Vimeo. Okay. Oh, BitChute. Haven't been to that channel yet, but I understand that this is almost like a Bitcoin kind of uh, platform where there is no central server, but all our computers support the are, are the server. Anyway, these are my thoughts. Uh, please like and subscribe. Comment, please. I love to hear your comments. And uh, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off on a cold, chilly, snowy Sunday evening. Good night.